sometimes you have to hold it in if you have to use the bathroom I've been there if you're hungry you just have to wait and Hello, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm just gonna be talking about a typical day for a psychiatrist that works in the outpatient setting. And this is different from a psychiatrist that works in the inpatient setting, which is working in an inpatient hospital and versus outpatient, which is seeing patients that make appointments and they come to see you at an office or clinic. So I'm just gonna be focusing on outpatient today. I may make a video about inpatient in the future if that's something that someone would like to see but just focusing on outpatient today because I've gotten this question a couple of times so I thought I would make a video about it I thought of doing this in like the vlog format but I just didn't feel comfortable bringing my camera to work and showing where I work and that type of thing so I'm just gonna talk about it because it's pretty simple it's very probably very similar to any other kind of job you're an employee as a doctor a lot of times and you work steady hours so i'm just going to talk about the typical outpatient psychiatrist so the typical outpatient psychiatrist would work maybe about eight hours and see eight hours of patients and maybe have a half an hour hour lunch so maybe they're at work for eight to nine hours I think the average doctor would work four hours. They see four hours of patients and then have a break or a lunch of 30 minutes to an hour and then have another four hours of seeing patients. And so you would show up to work, you know, get settled in. You have an office, a private office, of course, where you're seeing patients and you would just kind of get settled. Um, me personally, sometimes I will look up the patients that I'm seeing the next day, the day before, and kind of go over the notes and remind myself of what's going on with the patients and kind of maybe come up with things that I want to go over and make or things that I know I want to talk about so that I can use that time wisely with the patient. You kind of show up, get, get yourself settled, get logged into your electronic medical record if you're using one and just kind of look at whatever system you have for figuring out who's who's shown up like your your actual schedule of patients and seeing if anybody has shown up yet and then you just kind of wait for the first person to come and yeah then you end up seeing that person go through the interviewing process some people type while they're seeing the patient some people don't but at some point you do have to write a note. So some people that type while they're talking to the patient, they may be able to finish the note in the session. I have never been able to really do that. So if I am done with the patient and the next patient isn't there, I usually will try to use that little bit of time to try to finish up the note or type in as much as I can. But if the next patient is already there, then, you know, I'll say bye to the first patient and then I'll go and get the next patient. And then I'll talk to them, you know, do the interview with them and then check the schedule. If there's another patient, then I have to go and see that patient. So it can be pretty busy if you have, you know, several patients back to back. However, a lot of times that isn't the case and there are patients that cancel or they no show. And so you will have time to kind of finish your notes or if you need to use the bathroom, you can go use the bathroom. But sometimes you don't and sometimes you have to hold it in if you have to use the bathroom. I've been there. If you're hungry, you just have to wait until your break. And so that can be kind of tough sometimes just being on such a tight schedule and having the notes pile up if you're not able to finish them in between the patients and so that can be a little nerve-wracking a little bit but not really so yeah then you see the patients for the morning and then maybe you have a lunch break and um, some people use that time to 
eat while they're finishing their notes. I think that's probably what most people do. Or some people, they just, you know, use that time strictly just to eat. But a lot of it is working through your lunch, finishing up the notes, especially if you had patients back to back. And then you do it all over again in the afternoon and you see, you know, however many patients you have in the, in the afternoon. And then at the end of the day, you look at, you know, your notes and see who you were able to finish and which ones you still have to finish. And you can either stay at the clinic and finish them or go home and finish them later. But yeah, and it depends on you. Some people are really fast and they finish all their notes within the time period that they see the patient or they always finish their notes by the end of the day. Some people take a little bit longer and maybe they'll finish their notes the next day or so. But yeah, so that's the biggest thing. So it's more than just seeing the patient. You also have to document um, what happened during the encounter. And so that's extra time that doctors have to take um, to that's a part of their job. And the time that you spend with the patient is variable. For new patients, the average is maybe like 30 minutes to an hour. An hour is ideal with new patients and that's what I think most psychiatrists like, to have a full hour with a patient when you're first meeting them so that you can ask them all the questions that you have to go through. But some clinics only give you 30 or 45 minutes, and so you just kind of have to make it work. And um, for follow-ups, it can be from 15 minutes to 30 minutes. And again, that depends on the clinic, and that depends on what the focus is of that, that meeting and how um, complex the patient is. So yeah, you can see a lot of patients in one day as an outpatient psychiatrist and it can be pretty busy and it can be a lot of notes, um, but you know, you get through it and as you do it more and more, you kind of get a system and you get the hang of it and it starts to just be second nature for you. So that's kind of a typical day of an outpatient psychiatrist. If you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments. All right, I may do a video on inpatient psychiatry and how it's different from outpatient psychiatry. If you'd like to see that video, let me know as well. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was helpful to someone. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.